You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with your hosts, Andy Grant and Apio Hunter. Real Men Feel is all about encouraging men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to opening up discussions that most men aren't having, but you certainly don't need to be a man to join us. The Real Men Feel podcast is produced live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern for your growth and enjoyment. You can find more information about the Real Men Feel movement at realmenfeel.org. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or subscribe on iTunes by visiting realmenfeel.org slash iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at realmenfeel.org and at facebook.com slash realmenfeelshow. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. This is a weekly program, and your comments, feedback, and participation are welcome during the live show and anytime in the Facebook group, on Twitter, or at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello, and welcome to Real Men Feel. This is your... Uh your guest, your host. No, I'm not your guest. I'm your host. Hey, I'm the host and founder of Real Men Feel, Andy Grant. Happy to be joining you, talking to you. Uh, joining me as always, my co-host and friend, Mr. Apio Hunter. Hey, Andy. I guess we're both guests at time, aren't we? Hey, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. We are yeah. We're your hosts and your guests to this fine evening. <laughs> exactly. Because when you welcome us into your homes or your cars or wherever it is that you're listening to us, we are indeed your guest so yeah. thank you <laughs> however we are entering your brainstem <laughs> listen or watch um yeah this, this we go we we're syndicated as a podcast we are also on on youtube so if you've only been listening to us you can actually go to youtube and watch us if you've always watched us and are sick of seeing us you can just listen <laughs> and actually i made a new shortcut so realmenfeel.org slash youtube will take you to the playlist that is all the real men feel episodes if uh You've been wondering how to discover all of that, but yeah. there you have it. And um, you want to see these handsome faces behind the voices too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a face made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same here. <laughs> so this is episode 67. Um, we are recording this on August 29th, and this is the fourth day of the devastating, unprecedented Hurricane Harvey um, in Texas. And it hit, it, it well, it, Actually, we, we learned prior to this that it actually made landfall first in Mexico in, on the Yucatan Peninsula mm -hmm. and then went back out and became the Category 4, um, hit um, Corpus Christi and, and the coastline uh, of, of Texas on the Friday night of August 25th slash Saturday morning, the 26th, and has just been really nonstop. And, you know, the hype was big about this. And it's, it's sustained it. I saw, you know, today on day four that it's surpassed the uh, record rainfall in the continental United States at 49 point something inches and it's not done. Um, yeah. So we wanted to talk today about, you know, the, the heroes that come out of this Hurricane Harvey disaster. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm in Massachusetts. Apio, you are? In Salt Lake City. Right. So we're just, we're watching this on TV. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we're not in it. I, I have not had to deal with a flood in my life. I have not been wiped out of all my um, stuff. Um, but, but watching this as, as a man, as a real man who's willing to feel and feels, and you know, sometimes a good commercial can bring, get me emotional. You know, mm -hmm. Watching all the rescue efforts, has, it's been amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. You know, it, 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 the, the rescue efforts... In spite, of, this is the type of stuff that really encourages me about humanity in general. In spite of all the toxic stuff that you hear about in the news, which honestly I stopped watching the news a long time ago because it's, it focuses so much on the exceptions to human nature as opposed to the reality of human nature, is that even people with varying different opinions, you know, it, it, we may have those different opinions, but when it, when the chips are down and it comes time for us to help each other out, it happens every single time and so for me in spite of the tragedy in spite of of you know fortunately you not a huge loss of life but there still has been a loss of life and everything is happening to watch these images of the citizen brigades going out there and helping the the 
the paid rescue workers, the volunteer rescue workers, the people just going out there helping their neighbors, helping each other out, the flood of responses online through, through crowdfunding sites, everywhere you, you turn around, it's like, how can I help? What can I do? It just encourages me and reminds me what we really are as human beings, which yeah. is amazing and helpful and always willing to stand with each other. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's long been said that every, there's a gift in everything and really the, the gift in a natural disaster is people that come together. Indeed. You know, there's no, it's, it's just been amazing. I've seen people been giving out food. I even, I haven't caught any like looting stories or anything like that. It's just people mm -hmm. looking out for each other and each neighborhood, each neighbor deciding, do I want to stay or go? And then, you know, I know some levees were breached today. So new areas got flooded. New water has risen to new heights in neighborhoods. People that thought mm -hmm. they were fine today realize they're not fine. But yeah, mm -hmm. the flotilla of boats and jet skis and, and rafts and air mattresses and everything, just helping people and, and seeing and animals um, I saw someone today carrying a, a baby deer that they had found <laughs> trying to oh bring to dry land. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a amazing and, and heartwarming. Um, again, we are far. So it, it, yeah. it's heartwarming and easy, easy for us. But really what I want to talk about this and, you know, it's Texas, right? It's yeah. men are men. And we're tough and we're strong and we're stoic. And a lot of, you know, Texans take care of themselves. And that's kind of what's bringing mm -hmm. people together. But um, that doesn't mean they also don't feel. Yeah. And it, it, there could be the adrenaline rush and focus on survival. Like you don't have time to feel. You're just acting, you're helping people. But when, when folks go and exhale and after an 18 hour day in the water or days in the water, I've seen mm -hmm. families get rescued and they're finally safe again. And then uh, they, the, the tears start flowing. Oh my like, gosh. And finally exhale, right? So you might be feeling that watching, if you're listening, if you're affected or if you've been a responder, if you've been helping people, just let those emotions be there as well. Yeah. Um, being strong, being helpful doesn't mean you don't feel. And, exactly. and all of this can take a toll. And, and even if you have to bottle it up until it's time to let it go, then let it go, let it flow. I mean, don't mean to use a flooding metaphor, but you know, let it flow and it will, and it, and it will go. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting that you, I know that this is happening in Texas because it reminds me of when, what I had, you know, back on 9-11, you know, back in 2001 when 9-11 happened, I was actually in Texas when the, the whole thing happened. I had just gotten back from, from an international trip. I had spent uh, about a week and a half in Tokyo, had just gotten back and was in Texas. I was actually just outside in, in Dallas doing a database implementation for my old employer at the time and um, got stranded there. Um, of course, you no. Know, remember, no flights, no nothing, or anything like that. And, and it, it wasn't a natural disaster; it was a man-made disaster. But I really got a, a good taste of the character of the of just how amazing the folks are in Texas. Um, how incredibly wonderful and, and warm and hospitable they were for those of us who are stranded from out of town. Um, so this, to me, honestly, is not a surprising. It's not a surprise at all to see how they're responding and how they're coming together and how people from all over the country are doing what they can to, to, to join in that amazing can-do spirit that they have. So yeah, hats I, off. I, a little bit has surprised me, honestly, just because of uh, the media and politics makes it seem like we have never been so divided. Right. But I've seen white and black and Mexican helping each other. And, you know, just, yeah. just everybody's just a human right now. And, <laughs> and all life is equal. And they're glad and celebrating. And it just the heartwarming, the connections. And the, it's, it's just, it's, it's powerful. It it's, is. It really is. Right? It, it, really it's, is. It's, it's all these, and it's the heroes of, of survival and of helping. You know, it just... You know, trying to go at your own, trying to be independent, realizing, no, I need help. And you know, like people aren't going by like, you know, oh, wuss, you need help. You're a pussy. Like that's not happening. Like, oh, no. Give me no. your hand. Like, <laughs> and I have to also jump in and say something about the exhaustion that these people are going to feel. Because I don't know if you remember, but I lived a long time down in Florida. And in those years that I lived in Florida, I did experience four hurricanes and two tropical storms um the worst of which was wilma which interestingly enough wilma 
will actually hit the her the hit the Yucatan Peninsula it's the same way that Harvey did, but and just like Harvey, Wilma stalled over the Yucatan and just pummeled Cancun and a lot of those coastal resort areas for like four days, just like Harvey. And Wilma was like a category five storm when it was stalled over that area. So you can imagine what it was like. Um, having, and then when it finally came through and hit Florida, I know it hit the Gulf coast of Florida first and crossed straight over where I was in Fort Lauderdale and then went through. And when it went through over Fort Lauderdale, it was by that point, it, it had been dropped down to a category three storm, still major, still major damage and so forth. I can tell you from my own personal experience that even though Wilma itself was pretty much just like an eight hour storm, if you will, from the time that the whole thing started to the time that it was passed over us and we were just getting like little rain bands coming through it was emotionally exhausting just those eight hours and then of course the aftermath of the cleanup and everything else it was emotionally exhausting so i can't even begin to imagine what it's like for the folks who have had to endure this for days and days and days so so you know this is Absolutely. You know, if, if people need to look outside of themselves for permission to feel and to have that experience and to just kind of like let it out and let it go, permission granted. Oh, yeah. Permission granted. I, I, I yeah. know what it's like. I've been through that. Yeah. And it's going to hit people days, weeks, months, years. Oh, yeah. At this point, right? And there, there's going to be um, survivor guilt. Mm-hmm. Right, I, I'm yep. sure as the waters recede, with, there's going to just be a lot of a lot of bodies are going to be found that people are missing. Oh, it, right, it's going to yeah. be a gruesome scene. Exactly. Um, but you know, sometimes not even sometimes, always one of the most healing, helpful things you can do if you're in that area or in the area of any sort of disaster, hug. Don't <laughs> even, just let just you know find the biggest, burliest guy that just helped you and just you know thank you and give him wrap him up in a big hug and. Yeah. yeah, if there's emotions, if, like, let it happen. But, you know, I, I don't know what we can do to, to, to help the, uh, the roughest, toughest cowboys that are out in their boats and rescuing people and all night long and in the dark to give them, like, a home, be alone, you know, crack a beer and just start bawling to let all of that. <laughs> once the adrenaline eases down, once all mm-hmm. the rush of this, it, it's, everything is going to be there. Um, indeed, indeed. And, you know, to, to that point, I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, just for everybody who's listening, um, we will be putting links in the show notes for you to be able to go through, go and make donations to all of the, the agencies and the, and the organizations that are moving in on Texas to really help the people who have been affected by the storm. We ourselves are going to be making those donations as well. We'll be including those links to whoever it is that you want to make those donations to. Um, they will be there. Yep. Um, so these places, wherever you're finding us, but if you visit realmenfeel.org, the blog, um, the show notes, the blog entry for this show, episode 67 from August 29th, there'll be a link to just every resource we've been able to find. Yeah. Um, and, and also with that, let, let's also give a warning. Like, um, people calling you, people showing up at your door, you know, don't fall for the scams because someone, it's going to show up. It's going to happen. So focus on the Red Cross. But, you know, do your due diligence. Research somebody online before you do. Just, mm-hmm. like, cut a check. But, um, Absolutely. Go through reputable now, organizations. But, yeah. And, and cash is what's needed. So, yeah. you know, if you're, you're in a different state, boxing up some pillows and canned goods might not be the best thing. So just, you know, um, talk to people, talk to agencies, or, you know, you can always donate blood. I'm sure the Red Cross is always needing that. But, Absolutely. Uh, um, also, another big thing, which are two things which oftentimes people don't realize can be a huge necessity in the wake of any sort of a natural disaster, and this is something that I learned in some of the work I've done with local homeless shelters, and that is diapers and pet food. That's a huge need as well. But honestly, cash usually ends up being the best thing you can do immediately because that way the the agencies who are receiving those cash donations are then able to direct the resources and make decisions on the fly based off of what the immediate needs are and so forth. But, you know, if you want to actually 
donate things themselves, check with the agencies first. But I, I know for sure <laughs> that two big ones that are often overlooked, diapers and pet food. Yeah, so, and pets are a big thing. Uh, you know, a lot yeah, of people. Are. It, it was learned at Katrina. Like, and during Katrina, was that 05? That was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. I, I, I experienced Katrina too, but when yeah. she was a category one going through Florida. Yeah. So during <laughs> Katrina, a lot of people didn't go to shelters because shelters wouldn't allow pets. So that's a rule that's changed. Now I've seen a lot of people finally leaving with pets and pets and crates. And, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, as a pet owner and, and animal lover, it's all, it's, I, uh, I almost get more choked up seeing, oh no, the, you know, get that dog out of the water and people walking their dogs <laughs> through the woods and swimming or, or whatever. Yeah. But, um, you know, this is just mammoth. I didn't like that. The area we're talking about is bigger than the size of New Jersey. You mm -hmm. know, 6 million people live in just, in just Houston alone, greater Houston areas. That's not counting the yep. coast. It's not counting up to Austin and now going into Louisiana and the, yeah. the Harvey's headed there now. Um, it's just brutal. But again, it's, empowering and life affirming how people are reacting to this brutal situation. Yes. Right? So, so again, whenever you're listening to this, you can be listening to this in 2025, Texas will still need some help. So if you, yeah. if you just, Oh, I forgot all about that. Like reach out. Don't so donate in, in August of 2017, donate in 2025, like whatever you can do, check out, you know, because I've seen just some of the worst stories, like th places in Texas will be inhabitable for years. Yeah. Yes. And um, I'm, I don't want to debate, uh, you know, how how much did climate change add to this? But certainly, storms are stronger, and they're calling this the thousand-year storm. I just, I, I pray it is. I hope oh, this so doesn't. Is, this isn't the new norm of what what hurricanes are every couple years, or even you know, God forbid, more often than that. But right. Uh, hopefully this stays hopefully the response of americans stays this is the norm but yeah. the the need for this level of response certainly is uh once in a lifetime is is more than enough indeed indeed i i completely agree and you know let's just let's focus on our mutual humanity let's focus on on you know being real men and stepping up and you know supporting each other tossing aside whatever differences that there may be whatever to let's let's support each other and so you know support all of the important people in our lives the men the women the kids doesn't matter let's and realize that, that the, the important people in our lives can be the people we don't know exactly right again yes. uh, be if you're afar you know donating time donating energy donating money if you're in the area and you're you're in your boat you're rescuing people you're checking on neighbors or even just you, whatever town you're in and you lose power you check on your neighbors there right mm -hmm. the, uh, making sure the elderly are okay and have things and and just you know not everyone's able or aware enough to prepare for different things but uh you know, together so many people are getting through it and again seeing white black mexican i saw you know muslim families getting rescued by you know i don't know what to call them stereotypical you know southern hunting types and that i you know that i, I doubt they hung around with to begin with i saw a, yes. a sikh family uh, um, coming out of uh, a houston home today and it's just it's everybody it's it's um yep you know it's it's and instead of remember the alamo it's going to be remember harvey for, for a long time going forward, I think, right? It's, it's yeah. really, it, it is bringing out the best. And it's neat. I've it seen is. all, again, these, you know, outdoorsmen and, and rugged Texans and talking about, we take care of our own. And I saw this guy saying, Texans are different. We take care of our own. And it was, again, the affirming part of this is that our own isn't just other white guys. Yes. Right. And that, that's been yeah. powerful to see. Cause that's why, that's why I always felt and knew to be true, you know, is it, just, but, uh, Again, sometimes the political situation currently yeah. just, you know, it blinds everyone to that fact. So Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> my plug for <laughs> stop watching the news <laughs> and just watch whenever, whenever something real is happening, not something well, manufactured. Yeah, right. Watch the Weather Channel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? They're not, they're they're not intercutting with whatever else is happening. <laughs> You're just seeing people. Yeah. And it's amazing, the, the, the level of rescue. And, um, you know, I do want to – touch on this because it, it was really just the week before this storm hit that mm -hmm. that president trump talked about how bad the media were and went beyond fake news and was saying reporters aren't good for the country and they don't they don't like america and they're just really making them as enemies and it's times like this that really is beyond dangerous like people are looking to the news for for advice and life-saving information 
And so if, if somehow it's like, oh, everything's fake news, and the CNN reporter is saying I should go to here and I should you know, evacuate my town, but it's mm-hmm. fake news, like it's, it, that's, it's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's beyond yeah. politics, it's beyond rhetoric, and it's really freaking dangerous. It puts people's lives in, in jeopardy. It does. Because yeah. I've seen, I don't know if you've been watching his, you know, uh, I'm not working, so I've been watching a lot. <laughs> but I've seen reporters putting down the mic, helping people into boats, and, yes. and being part of the story, being part of the rescue effort. I've seen that several times, and you know, in my in my uh, feed on um, Flipboard, it's been great because you know, I, I keep getting, uh, you know, like lots of little you know pop ups and articles and so forth about celebrities, um, you know people who are on the news local reporters national reporters or whatever they just drop everything and go and help (laughs) and so again it just goes to show when the chips are down when it's really necessary we all we we come together we come together and even um and you can you you can take it as jaded like oh it's all you know live and it's just for the show but i've also again putting the mics down focusing on people not the story and i've also i saw one instance where um they were getting a woman with Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and the reporter t- t- turned the camera and said, just turn the camera off. Let's just, let's let me her feel as comfortable as she can and, and get her here safely. So yeah. it wasn't, you know, it wasn't live coverage of someone being, you know, beyond confused right. and scared, adding dementia on top of it. So, I mean, I, I thought I, that really impressed me just as that, that indeed. level of humanity. Yeah, indeed. But, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's it's not fake news. It's it's what's happening. And if we exactly. if we can't, you know, if everyone comes to believe that we can't trust um, any level of the media, then it, it, again, it's just yeah. uh, beyond dangerous and, and know, silly. And, to to your point, I will say that I do trust the media. I just choose not to listen to it because of the focus of the stories. But I, for one, you know, am more than happy to to trust the for the most part what is being reported just not necessarily i don't enjoy the reports yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> oh gosh so and, uh, what else did you want to to well, focus was, I, on tonight and today there was um so the, the there's been one houston police officer that's been lost to the flooding that was announced yeah. today Mm-hmm. And I did see the uh, Houston police chief live talking about it mm-hmm. and teary eyed and voice breaking up. And I was just, and then there's a brave man. There's a real man. And that's again, just to let everyone know, like I, at, at some level they know, but really give permission. And here's the strongest guy leading, you know, I think it said like 6,500 um, employees of the police department leading all them and lost one and is, is in tears and yeah. is, is brave enough to let that be seen, right? Yeah. During all the effort, during all the helping, there's, there's still, a, the, everyone's brokenhearted while yeah. they're helping and surviving and rescuing and keeping going, but they're mm-hmm. all going to crash. And yeah. the crash can be soft if everyone allows themselves to feel, right? It, yeah. There's going to be anger, shame. Uh, there's going to be fury. There's going to be guilt. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be depression. But, but instead of just, no, you know, it's not right and move on to the next thing. Like, yeah, you're setting yourself up for, for just a huge fall that's not necessary. Indeed. So, so I just Indeed. encourage, if, if, if something we can do, find us on Facebook. We'll give you a, a virtual soft landing. <laughs> you know, exactly. Uh, um, <laughs> or if, if anyone, you know, reach out, if anyone wants to come on and talk about their first and experiences do the, during this storm. Um, you know, uh, yeah, please share it. Know. You know, yeah, absolutely. So it, absolutely. it's again, it's just, again, I just wanted to make this space tonight to, for, for thanks for appreciation. And, you know, I invite all of us, I just thought of this and to, yes, yeah, so I just thought of it. So I'm going to say it like any sentence I say, <laughs> but uh, gas, gas is going to go up. Right, huge refineries. Yep. The Gulf's a big petroleum area for for the United States. So while you're pumping your gas for the next weeks to months, and you're noticing the high prices, instead of just you know complaining and, and bitching about it, you know, be grateful you got that car. Be grateful you've got a home to go to. Right, it just it, exactly yeah. So as you notice something new, mm-hmm. like that cost or the other things, or maybe it's going to be tougher for you to get diapers where you live, or you can't get a cot, you can't get a trailer because they're all being sent to Texas. 
just, oh, well, thank God I have this, right? Thank yes. God I didn't lose everything. Exactly. And, and thank God that we have the ability to be able to redirect our resources to where they can do the most good. Yeah. 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 So if you have family, friends, loved ones in Texas, uh, give them a hug, give them a shout for us. If you're there, uh, I don't know what to say, you know, thank God yeah. you're still here. I'm glad you're getting through it and, and you'll continue to get through it. Yeah. But you know, the country's not going to turn your back on you. The world's not going to turn the back of you. Losing everything doesn't mean you know, God or the universe, you know, life has not turned its back on you. Um, and perhaps some people will say, well, this is going to be the, the greatest time in my life because I realized what was important. Indeed. And all my stuff got washed away, but my family is still here. And, yeah. you know, again, that could be, could be the greatest gift. You, you said something that made me think about something else and that is you know the saying that oftentimes the time that times of trial times of tribulation times of great difficulty or contrast frequently end up being blessings in disguise and I, so I don't mean to sound sound mean to sound cliche or trite or or anything along those lines but there's a great deal of truth behind that statement oftentimes when we collectively as humanity want something, want unity, want uh, to get along like we've been saying so much recently, given you know, the, the current you know, climate in our country, it's things like this that are exactly come along in response. It's as tragic as they can be, as challenging as it can be, as, as emotionally draining as they can be. They're providing us with the, exactly the opportunity that we say that we want in order to be able to come together and help each other as human beings, to live harmoniously as human beings, to exist harmoniously. So that's not to acknowledge or diminish anything that anybody's going through right now, either in Texas or Louisiana, but also hopefully those who are listening and they, they hear these words know and understand that this is indeed that opportunity to have a, to see the blessings of what's happening and what we're going through right at any time of disaster you know look, look to the helpers i'm kind of misquoting i think it's a famous mr rogers thing right you see mm -hmm. instead of being scared look to the people rushing in look to the helpers and and in this situation it's been first responders it's been military it's been coast guard it's been volunteers it's reporters it's the media it's it's everybody it's people of all ages with any anyone that can swim and that can float is checking on neighbors and making sure and going back to places and working you know insane just straight 12 18 24 hours straight and yeah. kind of going probably going home to their flooded house like yeah that's what i couldn't imagine like you're out here helping helping and feeling good and working and then you 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 head to your home to finally gas up and fuel up and wow you know now your neighborhood's been hit and you didn't even know it right it's yeah. just uh, it, it gets the power of disaster and tragedy bringing people together and i, I gotta believe at some point we won't need the tragedy, right? Yes, yes, I, I completely agree, and it's true. We will reach that point where we don't need that anymore. We'll be able to actually transcend all of that, and we'll be able to, you know, once we are living in that, that, that space of, of enlightenment, if you will, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, ascendancy, enlightenment, um, just true acknowledgement and awareness of the interconnectedness of all things and the interconnectedness of each of us uh, when we're able to reach that point and live there consistently the tragedies or the the, the disasters won't be needed there will be other things much more joyous things that can bring us together and to yeah. keep us together I guess yeah. the, you know, what if life itself was enough of a disaster for us to have the compassion and caring for each other Right? What if that's a, you know, like, oh, it's Monday. Hey, you need a hug. It's Monday. Hey, how are you doing? You getting the food? It's Monday. You know? Right, exactly. And I think we can certainly have plenty of examples from our own lives of how yeah. much a disaster things can be. Yeah, no, it can be. Yeah. You don't need, <laughs> yeah. Again, not to make light of people losing it, but, but also mm -hmm. to make light because in whatever you're going through, when you can laugh about it, mm -hmm. you're, you're, the healing is there. 
Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Boy. And I, I laugh at myself a lot. And that might be a great thing for people too. Hopefully there's be some comedy benefits and, you know, Indeed. I know, I know Kevin Hart was one of the first people I saw to talk about money, but yeah, go, go do a flood tour, go get some people able to laugh and, and yeah. feel all the other things of life again, beyond terror and survival. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, you know, look at, if you need to look at the example of kids in dire, dire circumstances, not just here in the U S but anywhere around the world. And you see that that default setting of being able to find some, the joy in whatever it is that you're doing is there. It's just so natural, so much a part of who we are. Cool. So again, we, um, visit realmenfield.org uh, for the blog, for show notes, for, for links to places to donate. Um, but of course, the big obvious ones, the, the Red Cross, always good. And I know there's a, the Greater Houston Community Foundation is ghcf.org. And that's really something put together by the city. Um, it's legitimate. Uh, I also want to just quickly go through a list. There's a... Uh, American Red Cross, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, Red Cross, I said. Uh, Salvation Army. Right, United yeah. Way. Mm -hmm. um, big people. Um, GoFundMe, there's a lot of things. Different companies are donating. Um, you check with your employer, depending who you work for. Maybe there's a matching program. And then there's also um, a lot of things just for the pets, for pet food, for, for dog and then cat rescue, uh, Austin Pets Alive, the, the SBCA of Texas, um, SBCA.org, uh, American Society for Cruelty, ASC? Uh, AS, 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 uh, PCA, ASPTA, American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll spit that yeah. out somehow. Exactly. Again, again, whenever you're listening, there'll still be need. So if, again, if, if, if there's crossing your mind months from now, weeks from now, it, it, it's all good. Um, you know, give it up for Texas. And again, as you're pumping gas, as you're noticing prices, as you're, as you're noticing anything that feels difficult in your life, remember what's going on down on the shore and the people that have lost literally everything except their lives. Um, exactly. And, so find, and they, find that space to, to express gratitude. Yep. Give the gratitude and, uh, Again, send, send lots of love, send lots of support. Um, if, if watching it has been true traumatic for you, let your emotions flow too, right? It's, it's, yep. it's okay. And, you know, if you're really connected and really empathic, you can be relieving some of the emotion for the people you're, you're witnessing as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there's just one thing I wanted to share before we uh, kind of wrap this one up. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier this year, we did a show on internalized homophobia. And yeah. we had guests, yeah, and it was, it, was, it was one of my favorite shows. Same here. I love yeah. that show. So it was a really cool, interesting talk. And the, just this week, someone posted on YouTube that uh, I'm shocked that this only has 72 views. This is such a brilliant discussion, and all of you are so interesting and entertaining. I honestly assumed that this would have at least a few thousand views until I noticed the 72 in the corner. And, uh, yeah, sometimes the low numbers of views disappoints us too. But it's like, hey, well, at least 72 people found that show on YouTube. Exactly. And I, I'm pretty sure, I, I think it had hundreds of plays um, uh, on iTunes. Mm -hmm, right. But, uh, but yeah, so the podcast audio goes one place and the video goes to YouTube. But if you have come across a show that you're like, wow, this is amazing, you know, viral, viral hits happen by people sharing them. So exactly. I love the comment, but I hope, hope that guy shared the video and posted it somewhere <laughs> and told other people like, you know, I appreciate, <laughs> I, I appreciate everyone that comes out of, makes the, uh, a point to tell Apio and myself that an episode, the whole show, you know, during the time we were gone, like, Hey, where are you? Please come back. This, this is yeah. value. I love it. Uh, please give us more. Um, tell and, other and, people and, that too. <laughs> exactly. And also the huge shout out to all of our past guests who have continued to be involved, to stay in touch with us, who uh, have just been amazing men and women who continue to, to bring people in. Uh, huge shout out to each one of you and our deep, deep thanks to each one of you who have shared and who have continued to be part of the Real Men Feel family. Indeed, indeed. And as, just one fine point in talking about Hurricane Harvey and talking about disaster and first responders everywhere, you know, we're talking about men, but I don't want to discount the women that are there too. Indeed. Um, but traditionally the women don't have as much of a block as mm -hmm. feeling the overwhelm, getting it out. Right. Yep. So, uh, men follow your women's leads. If you know, you, you get home, you hug your girlfriend, your wife, someone you're rescuing and they're balling. You don't have to, don't choke yourself by sucking your emotions in. Just go exactly. cry right with them. Right. Let, 
And you can even blame them if you need, oh, she, me, I could, you know, I was mirroring her emotion. It wasn't really what I wanted to do. Whatever, you know, whatever level of bullshit you need to hold on to for your, your own egoic need, fine. But don't hold on to it so much that you're killing yourself. With it. Exactly, exactly. And if you need to go on a little, you know, road trip, quick little road trip around the corner, whatever, listen to this. Let your, This is the safe space. Let it out. Ball there, you know, ball, ball in private, let it out, and then just keep going. Yeah, keep going. Uh, toughest man in the world will crawl into a ball at some point, and it's yep. good. That's a good sign. That's healing. That's you letting it go. All right. So yep. that's, yeah. I think we've uh, we've stressed that enough. Yep. But <laughs> kudos um, to all of you in Texas getting through it, um, being helped, helping others, doing both. Uh, if you get. Boy, if you got weeks and months to go in, in a shelter now, yeah, just, you know, God bless. And just know that however it may feel, uh, the, the, really the whole world is, 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 is with you, despite yes. how it might feel. Indeed. We are indeed. Awesome. So thanks for joining us for this show. Um, stay dry wherever you are. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your friends and your family and your soon-to-be friends who are strangers right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> let let life keep introducing you to find people and uh and we'll talk to you again soon and remember to just keep feeling every moment of every day beautiful thank you for listening to real men feel until next time visit realmenfeel.org join the real men feel group on facebook and share what you thought of this show please give this podcast a review on itunes google play or wherever you are discovering real men feel Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com and Apio Hunter at apiohunter.com.